Hey everybody, welcome back. It's me, Miss Robinson, and I am back with another math video for you guys. In today's, or in this particular video, I should say, we are gonna be looking at lesson 1.6. And in lesson 1.6, we are going to look at another addition strategy. Yes, we have another strategy. This one is called the break apart strategy. And in the break apart strategy, you take your add-ins and you're gonna break them apart by their place value positions. And then we're gonna find several partial sums and then we're gonna add those partial sums together to come up with our final answer. Now that all sounds confusing right now, but I am confident that as we work through these examples in just a second, it will make more sense for you. Again, if you're asking, why do I need all these strategies, Miss Robinson, why can't you just tell me how to do this in one way? And the reason for that is because what may be efficient and work for you may not work for your classmate. And so these are just available to you to use so that you can use them when you need them. And I need to expose them to you in case you ever see them out there on a test or in the real world. So I'm going to flip the camera around to the whiteboard. I'm going to do some examples for you guys and then I'll come back and wrap up the video. So I will see you in just a second. All right, here we have our first example. We are adding a 355 plus 415. And in the interest of time, I've already come up with my estimated answer. Right now, my estimated answer is 900. Using my rounding rules, I looked at the three because that was the highest place value position given. I looked immediately to my right, there's a five there, which means this three was going to be rounded up and changed to a four. The remaining digits became zeros and that is how I got 355 to round up to 400. Then 415, I boxed in the four, looked immediately to my right, there's a one, so I know that we're rounding down. In other words, the four will not change. The remaining two digits became a zero, so 415 rounded down to 400, and that is what gave me my estimated answer, not of 900, bad Miss Robinson, but of 800. So that tells me when I finish my exact answer should be somewhere around 800 and if it's not something's gone wrong and I need to go back and check. So in this strategy we are going to or this strategy is called the break apart strategy and what we're going to do is we're going to break down both of our add-ins by their place value positions. So first things first when I'm doing this I need to make sure that I know that this is the ones place, this is the tens place, and this is the hundredths place. So I'm gonna look at each place value position and figure out what is the value of that digit in that place value position. And I'm gonna start with my highest place value position with 355. So in the number 355, there is a three in the hundredths place. So that tells me that that is worth 300. Plus, there is a five in the tens place, and if I have five tens, that is the same thing as me saying that I have 50. Plus, there's another five in the ones place, and if I have five ones, that is the number five. So 355 broken apart is going to be 300 plus 50 plus five. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with 415. I'm gonna look at my hundreds place. There's a four there, so that means I have four hundreds. So I'm gonna write that as 400. Plus, there's a one in the tens place, and if I have 110, that's just the number 10. Plus five in the ones place, which means I have five ones. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add each of these together but by the place value positions. So five plus five is going to be 10. 50 plus 10 is going to be 60. And then 300 plus 400 is going to be 700. So I obviously can't leave my answer like that. That is not a standard way for me to leave my answer. So I'm going to say, okay, if I have 700s plus 60 plus 10, what is that number really going to be? And I should recognize that that number is going to be 700 and not 60, 10, but 60 plus 10 is 70. So it's going to be 770. So that is my first example. I took my add-ins together, I broke them apart, then I added them by their place value positions, and then I went from there. So we will do another example. We will break apart two different add-ins. 
Okay, I just realized in the last example we did not do the final step of comparing our exact answer to our estimated answer. So if you remember in that first example, our estimated answer was 800 and our final answer was 770. And 770 is very close to 800. So I feel comfortable that we did that problem correctly. Now onto this one, we have 467 plus 208. I'm gonna first come up with my estimated answer by rounding. So I'm gonna look at 467. Four is either gonna be rounded up or down, so I'm gonna look directly to the right. There's a six, so I know that this is going to be rounded up. So the four will become a five, and the remaining digits become a zero. So 467 will round up to 500. Same with 208. I'm gonna look at the two because that is the number that is either gonna be rounded up or down. I'm gonna look directly to my right. There's a zero, so I'm gonna be rounding that down, which means the two will stay the same and then the remaining digits become zero, so 208 will round to 200. And then if I add those two together, 500 plus 200 is 700. So my answer should be somewhere around 700 when I finish up. Now let's break these numbers apart. So I have 467. I wanna look at it by each place value position and write the value of that digit. So I'm gonna look at my hundreds place first because that is my highest place value position. And there is a four there. So that I know that represents 400. Plus there's a six in the tens place and six tens is equal to 60. Plus there's a seven in the ones place and seven ones is equal to seven. Now I'm gonna look at the next add-in, 208. Looking in the hundreds position, there's a two there, so I know that, that represents 200. There's a zero in the tens place, so I have no tens. And then there's an eight in the ones place, so I have eight ones. And then I'm gonna add each of my place value positions. 400 plus 200 is 600 plus 60 plus zero is 60, plus seven plus eight, that is going to be 15. Now here's where it can get a little bit tricky. And you may get to this point and realize or ask yourself, well, how am I supposed to represent that as an answer? So I know that 600 plus 60 is going to be 660, but I can't have 660 and 15, so then I have to think about regrouping this. I need to look at my 15 and ask myself, how many tens are in 15? Well, there's one in the tens position in the number 15, so that tells me there's one 10. So that means instead of this being 60, this is gonna become 70 because I took the 10 from the 15 and regrouped it to the tens place. And now, instead of that being 15, that's actually just going to be five because there would be five ones left over after I regroup the number 15. Now this is easier for me to represent as an answer. 467 plus 208, based on my answer, my break apart strategy would be 675. Now before I get all excited about being done with this math problem, I need to do the final step and ask myself, is 675 close to my estimated answer of 700? And the answer to that is yes. So I feel really good about the work that I just did. I'm confident in my answer because I use my estimate to check my answer and they're close, so I know that I'm good. So those are my two examples for you. I will be right back once I flip this camera around and I will give you some closing thoughts for this lesson. All right, so those were your examples. So some things I really want you guys to remember is that it is always a good idea, even if the directions don't tell you to do so, or I don't tell you to do so, it's always a good idea in the very beginning to come up with your estimated answer because your estimated answer is one way for you to know and feel confident that the actual answer that you came up with is correct because if it's close to your estimate, then you know chances are you're correct. If it's not close to your estimate, then you know chances are you made a mistake somewhere and you're gonna need to go back. Also, when you're using Using this strategy, you want to make sure that you understand your place value positions, that you know the ones place from the tens place to the hundreds place, and that you are adding each of those place value positions together and that you're not mixing them up because if you do that, that will cause you to get an answer that is actually going to be incorrect. Aside from that, just as always, be confident, take your time, persevere, even if it's hard, keep trying, and you will get there. If you found this video helpful, please, please, please give it a thumbs up 
the thumbs up is really encouraging to me and i will be sure to see you guys in the next video until then have a good one everybody bye